Here's why so many people are financially illiterate and what that can reveal about you. Let's talk about it. Hey, I'm Kyle, I talk about money, and if you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button and share this video. On the surface of it all, it's not surprising why so many people are financially illiterate. There are many factors that go into people not really managing their personal finances the right way. This is due to many forces that make it very hard to actually grasp on how our money works. That's why in this video, I'll share with you five big reasons why people get into serious debt while spending on things they don't really need. It's not a sickness, it's just the way our economic system, unfortunately, and for some fortunately, operates. Reason number one, our schools do not prioritize financial education. I wasn't required to take an economics class until I was in graduate school. What does that tell you about our educational system? For many high schools, and colleges, we prioritize many different areas that have nothing to do with our money. The closest many people will get to a formal financial education is their mathematics class. That's it. There's not even a personal budgeting class to take. Even then, it's not required. But apparently we're required to take English 101 or religious history. You get the idea. Just look at some of the classes you've been in and tell me if they honestly make an impact in your careers. It's a shame most high schools and colleges don't even teach you how to do basic accounting. Most people don't even know how to do their own taxes. A financial education is the root of all our problems when it comes to debt and the sorts. You would think that the basic premise behind almost everything we do revolves around money, and they should be teaching us something about it. The problem isn't the lack of classes. There are tons of classes available to everyone. The issue is that these classes aren't required. If it's not required, you're most likely not going to take it. There's no point in being a brilliant scientist if you can't live within your means and budget your life properly. Reason number two, numbers are boring to many people. Did you love math class when you were in school? Probably not. I hated it until I took a statistics class and then I hated it even more. For many people, numbers are boring. And guess what? Finance deals with numbers all the time. They just put a dollar sign before before it. We all love money and we wish we had more of it, but when it comes to the details of how our money works, we fall right asleep. I bet almost all of you watching this don't even keep a journal of your daily expenses. It's one of the best ways to see how much you're actually spending so you can change your habits. But no, we don't have time or a care in the world for that. This also connects back to reason number one. People don't take basic finance courses because it's boring. Not even the temptation of talking about money may be enough to make you enroll in that class. That's why people don't bother with getting educated financially. There's no interest in how our money works. And if there's little interest in something, we don't use it and we don't utilize it as much. Yes, keeping track of your daily expenses and then adding them up at the end of the month and then repeating that every month, quarter, year can be quite a chore, but it's how we can get control of our money. Reason number three, the law intentionally makes finance very confusing. Another reason why people aren't financially literate is that it's just too complicated. I hope you're getting a sense that all five of these reasons are connected somehow. The law makes everything wildly complicated that we rather just spend money on accountants and lawyers to draw up something for us. And even though that's a reasonable conclusion, if things are complicated, it's still important you have an idea what your accountant is doing. The rules and regulations are so complicated and it's intentionally made complicated because rules are drafted and implemented every single year. I took an accounting class once and was so confused whether something on a balance sheet and income statement was put into the credit or debit category. Apparently accounting, credit and debit don't really mean what you think they mean. Should you do a standard deduction or an itemized deduction? And is that even relevant after the 2018 tax overhaul? How do wealthy people get away with paying 15% income tax when the top marginal rate is 37%? What is an amortized loan? Is there a difference between a 30-year fixed mortgage and a 30-year arm? It's complicated. Most people just don't know and many are left to their own devices if they can't afford an accountant. You can't simply Google these things because the language is too complicated to understand. I guess it has to be since a bunch of lawyers drafted these rules. 
Reason number four, businesses want you to have little financial literacy. You're exploited every single day by companies to make you buy things you don't need and at a price that you believe is reasonable when it really isn't. Look at discounts. If something originally cost $100 and it's on sale for $80, how much have you saved? If you answered $20, then they've got you. You didn't save anything. You spent 80 bucks. If you think you're getting a deal, then I urge you to look closely at what you're actually buying. Most of the time, you're not buying an asset that will grow. You're a consumer, and usually that thing you bought will be consumed and poof, there's no real exchange of value. Let me ask you why you're saving your money. Many will answer that they're saving for a vacation next summer or to buy that new car or that engagement ring. You're saving to consume? That's what businesses want and that's how basic economics work. You give people money and they give it to someone else in exchange for something they perceive as valuable. But many people don't give the answer that the only reason why someone should save is to invest. You save to grow your money, not to spend it away. Investing means different things, however. It's not just about putting your money in the stock market. Investing could mean investing in your education or your business. Investing is putting your resources into something that will produce a net benefit over time. For the most part, businesses want you to think spending is the way to go. Food isn't an investment, it's an immediate satisfaction. I'm sure you can spend less for something just as healthy. If you're unaware of these things, then you're part of the cycle of basic economics. Every business loves that. The less financially educated you are, the more you'll spend, spend, spend. Reason number five, money has become so easy to access. If I gave you one Ferrari, you can't sell it for this example, you'd probably treat it like the most precious thing in the world, right? Now let's say I gave you a Ferrari every single day of your life. You'd probably treat each car like a piece of junk because you have such a ridiculous surplus that each additional car is worth less and less to you. That's the same with our money. It's never been easier to have access to money so easily. If you have a credit card, you're all set. Credit is made easy because that's how our basic economics works. When you spend your money on food, gas, clothes, theme parks, uh, vacations, Netflix memberships, you're contributing to the economic cycle. Unfortunately, these readily available cash is very tempting for many, and many people spend, spend, spend a little too much. Raise of hands, how many of you check your credit card balance every day? Maybe n none of you. You should, you don't want to be surprised at how much you've spent only when you have to pay off your credit card at the end of each month. Even then, most people just pay the minimum balance. Credit card debt is at an all-time high. The average American owes $8,600 in credit card debt, and it's been increasing every year. This all harks back to our lack of financial education. I get it, having a credit card is tempting. It equates to almost an unlimited bankroll. It's just what most people don't think about their spending since it's disguised within a shiny plastic card. Our educational system prioritized the wrong things. I get that managing your money isn't the most important thing you want to do. You're occupied with things we think are more important because we just don't get it. How could we? Our illiteracy in finance is at an all time high. We spend too much with money we don't really have. Even worse, we spend money on things we don't need and to which won't help us grow. It's time to get your finances in order. So how financially illiterate are you? Perhaps there's something more you can learn. That's something to think about. If you want to take care of your money and make more of it, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you stay up to date on more videos. Check out my other videos on personal finance, business, and investing. Until next time, I'm Kyle and thanks for watching.